Happy Friday, everyone. Friday, Friday. How's everybody doing? I hope you're selling to serve. So this is part three, episode three of Selling to Serve series, where we are going to teach you how to find the need. Hey, the Bridget. Point. Hey, Bridget. It's What's good to see on? you. Yeah. So on our last two episodes, the first one, we talked about rapport and how to build it and why it's so important. Then we talked about asking very powerful questions. Hopefully you did your homework. To build a rapport, asking questions. Now, now we are. So what we do with those questions, once you ask all those questions, the whole purpose behind it is to find the need. You're going to find the need. You got to find the pain point, the problem. <laughs> And it will stick out like no other if you're asking the right questions. And then what you do is you lean into it by asking even more questions. And then you lean into it a little, little bit, bit more. Until you make the pain even more painful. Listen. It's your job. It's not because we're cruel. It's not because you want to be mean. It's because people need to make decisions. They People make decisions when they're feeling it, when they're in the pain, right? Think about it. We either pay for something to go away or we pay to go get something and bring it to us. Unfortunately, people are motivated by pain. That's just the world that we live in. We and we're changing by pain. this paradigm. That's one of the things that we teach in our training, how to let go of why we're motivated by pain. And knowing that about 90% of your clientele, not all people are that way. Sometimes they're motivated by possibility. Um, so when you, when you listen to their key words, if they're talking more about possibility, then you want to paint the picture of possibility. But if they're talking about pain points, then that's what's going to get them moving. It's what's going to get them motivated to buy so in the context of real estate for yes. those of you in real estate and because Bridget's Bridget. on I might as well talk a little real estate talk so what's important to you about selling your house what's important to you because everybody's like oh yeah I know what they need they need their house sold no there's not that's not the reason why they're selling there's something else mm -hmm. there's some other that's surface level yeah just because they want their house sold that doesn't mean that's why they're doing it or that that that's not the need yeah they need to hire an agent they need to get their house sold, but what's underneath all that need? There's something else there, right? There's either a financial motivation, which or is usually painful. I right? need the money, mm -hmm. or I need to buy a bigger house, or I want to expand, right? It's all these questions that a lot of people, interestingly enough, don't ask in order to build that rapport so they can actually better serve the client, especially when it comes to insurance. Well, yeah, 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 I need auto insurance. I need hazard insurance on my house. But what does that do for that person? What is the underlying thing or issue or value that's going to motivate that person to buy? Yep. And, yeah. there, and there's going to be a problem. Yes. There's going to be a problem so that great that it's like, I'm afraid of this. I don't want this. That last agent, that SOB took advantage of me, right? And now I'm afraid to do X. And so you're finding problems. You're getting to the root, the yes. root cause. And this is something that we <laughs> always talk about in our, our three day applying NLP to business training. Literally you're putting on your coaching hat and you're navigating through this process because you are a problem solver and you are figuring out during this point in the sales process, are we a good fit? Can I truly serve this person with the product or service or training or coaching or whatever it is that I have to offer? Is it a good fit? Am I going to bring value to this person's life? And if, you, if it's a hell yes, then you keep moving forward. And if you can't bring value to that person's life, then guess what? Refer them out. What is there, 8 billion people on this planet? Yeah. I'm sure there's a couple more buyers out there. Yeah. I'm sure there's someone else out there that could use and maybe love your service or product or whatever it is, and they need a solution solved. They need the, they need the solution, and they don't have it. Yes, yes. So the pain point and the motivation, how do you find the motivation is what's important to you about selling? What's important to you about a coach? What's important to you about a health uh, trainer? What's important to you about financial services? So getting that out, those things there are their values. When you ask those that, that simple question of what's important to you, you're getting values, you're eliciting values, which is so powerful because values it's not what we like, but it's what's important to us. Yes. Money, money is a value, right? It It's not something necessarily you like, but it's something that's important, unfortunately, in this day and age in order to buy things in commerce. And we're not on the trade and barter system. 
a hundred percent. So you got to make some money, right? So you got to have money to buy things, which is an exchange of energy. So money is very much a value. So you have to understand where your clients are. Are they motivated toward money? Or are they motivated away from money, right? Do they want to save it or do they want to hoard it? Yeah. Right. Are mm -hmm. they afraid of losing it? Yep. Another pain point, a lot of people, so uh, money, and it's, it's, it's funny because these are the objections that we're going to be talking about later on um, during the series, but it's a lot of times the pain point is around money or family or time issues. These things are all things that are very important to people at the unconscious level, and they will do things. They will buy and purchase services or their health. They'll buy and purchase services that will solve those problems. So if you're just jumping on, or you're watching the replay. So this is Selling to Serve series, episode three, finding the need, right? Finding that pain point. And um, we were just talking a little bit about how, just because, for example, whatever you're selling, product, service, we were talking about real estate. If you're selling real estate, well, yeah, the house needs to get sold, the property needs to get sold, but that's not the need. There's a deeper need. There's something that's underneath the surface, the first surface level. We call it deep structure. And when you find those needs by asking things like, well, what's important to you about selling your house? What's important to you about getting insurance? What's important to you about securing a loan? Whatever it is, that's where you start to get real problems, real pain points. And those are when we as professionals can find solutions. And when we find solutions, you've got a client. Yeah. In the world of coaching and training, a lot of times the people's needs are like, I need to stop self-sabotaging myself. I need to let go of these fears and doubts that are holding me back from being the best version of myself. You know, for our business training, you know, what's important to you about taking a sales training or, you know, how specifically is you not being able to sell your products or service getting in the way of you being successful? And usually it's a pain point of fear of sales, fear of rejection, fear of not making enough money, fear of going out of business. All those things are the need for our product and service. It's all the pain points. Yes. Because when, when we say, so um, how important is personal growth and development in your life? And someone's like, gosh, you know, I just don't have the kind of money. I'm like, well, let's talk about that. that. That's because exactly why you need to come to the that's training. That's the problem that needs to be talked about is <laughs> how we don't have enough money to invest in ourselves. Where have we let that go? Or where has that been a pattern in our past? Yeah. Right, and that's exactly what we talk about is um, is actually investing in ourselves and finding the funds and the resources to do that. Yeah, and this is why again, um, this is the the next level of why people are coming across too salesy is because they're truly not asking the questions and they're truly not listening to the client and they're trying to sell something the client doesn't need. Yep. And that's when you come up against people that you feel like they have commission breath. That's what we call it, commission breath. And are, they're only looking at you as a dollar bill and they're not really listening. They're not li listening to, am I going to be able to add value to this? No commission life? breath. Say no to commission breath. Again, it is going to backfire in the end for you because you don't want to work with those people that aren't a good fit because then you'll have chargebacks and stuff like that. So ask those questions. What's important to you? How specifically? And find the need. And then if you do, well, I hope you do, um, then we'll tell you what to do with that in our next session on Monday. Find the need. Ask great questions. There's always There should be about a dozen or so, maybe 15 or more questions that you should be asking. That's constantly just, you're always prying a little bit more, right? You get somewhere and you want to pry a little bit more, right? You constantly want to get a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper and understand the situation, but even more so is understanding, um, you know, what the client truly values. Well, and think about too, like we all do this avatar work, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. No, go right ahead. So like, you know, who your potential <laughs> client, what their problem points are, right? Are your, the people that you've worked with in the past that were your best clients, those pain points are going to be the same pattern that you're going to see in most people. So you're going to be sifting through that stuff to find out, okay, is that problem the one that I normally see and how can I solve it? Absolutely. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like a pain point of, like what our pain point is, we like to help coaches or business owners that are making between seventy five dollars and $85,000 a year get up to making 150 to $200,000 a year. We love that because when someone starts getting into the six figure income bracket, mm -hmm. they've got so much more resources. They've got a newfound um, confidence, they right? They can go out and serve more people. The problems you used to have at 75 and 85,000, when you make 200,000, when you make 150,000, you don't have those problems anymore. You got different problems. You, you got a new set of problems. And that's right? all good because you continue to up level. And we love that. Like we love to help see people break into that bracket because that's like, 
yeah, you're going to pay more taxes. Yes. Yes, you are going to pay more taxes. I can guarantee you that. And that's good. Pay more taxes. It means you make more money. Let's not run from taxes. Let's, let's pay more. Yeah. You know, let's have that mindset of attracting more, doing more, getting more, serving people more. Yeah. So, so I guess what I was saying before, and I don't think I felt, I felt, I didn't feel like it came across very eloquently is go back and talk to some of your past clients and really trace back to those steps and like what truly was their need. And those are those things that you're going to start for the later session that we're going to talk about stories and we're going to talk about reframing because those are the things that you're going to start asking when you're finding the need, you're going to automatically start reframing those problems and showing how your product and service can solve those problems. And then follow up. Follow up is, a, is an important part to this finding the need. Look, we've done some calls where we didn't get to the need. That's okay. Fo do a follow up call do a follow-up session, whatever it is, and, and really get to it. But you want to get to it as quick as you can because the quicker you can get to the need, the quicker you can close. Then you have more ammunition. There's sometimes where I've had a I've had a telephone call and I got part of the need and then I did a follow-up and I got some more of the need. It depends on how you're doing your sales calls and every single one of them is going to be different and that's okay. Um, sometimes also, you get to it right away and they're ready to buy and it's the right timing. It also depends on how much rapport you have. Yeah. Because if you have a lot of rapport and you've done the first step really well and you've done the second step really well, then they'll tell you more and share really more about what that need is. And we'll even say, hey, so what's your biggest challenge right now? What's your biggest problem? If you were to have one, I'm not saying you do, but if you were to have one, what might that be? I like what Hannah said. Hi, living, bre um, breathing, Hi, living breathing human. That's, Buy my product. That's super freaking big picture. Too. We've had people go, hey, I'm Brandon. Do you want to take a training? Do you want to take a training? I know I, I need people in my training. I used to be that way. <laughs> no, that's not rapport. As soon as you meet someone, you can't pitch your stuff. I was learning. And, and, and saying it jokingly doesn't bring confidence. It actually brings insecurity. So be careful for those of you out there. That's, that's a massive insecurity. It's filling a giant void. We don't want to do that. So talk with someone, get to know them, build some rapport, then start to say, hey, what's your need? Hey, do you know anyone? I do this, this, and this. Do you know anyone that needs this kind of video work, this kind of photographer, this kind of per, uh, personal training? You know, there, there's lots of ways to pitch that um, to where it doesn't seem and sound sleazy and needy. And if you want to get a more uh, structured process, and come join us for the three-day business training that's coming up in October the 25th to the 29th. We give you all these questions and all the steps, so you literally can run down through it, and you always know where you're at in the sales cycle, and you have this amazing ability to unravel the problem to where then you can go in for the close. It's really powerful. Yep. If you're interested in that. We've had people come out of that training and go out and make thousands of dollars of commissions. I had a real estate guy that changed up his process and script a little bit and like, bam, put together a $15,000 commission in California. And, and all he did was realize he, it clicked for him. Mm -hmm. You know, he goes, you know what? I just was getting, I was dancing all around how to sell. He's like, I never really got to that need. And once I found that need, I actually could connect with my client. They saw the value that I was offering them. And they sign. And you can better serve them when you dig into those pain points because it's your job as a salesperson to ask and lean into the problems to where you get all those nitty gritty details to where <laughs> then you can really serve them and help them and you can solve them. Because if you don't get those out of their mind, then that can be a problem later in your service because you're not presenting the information or giving them the experience that they really, really needed to have happen in order for them to know that they're successful. Another tip on the question is, do you know someone that's done this? that you're looking for? Like, do you know someone that's done this before? Or have you ever done this before? Have you ever hired this person before? Have you ever achieved this kind of result before? You know, those are all important things, especially um, in the context of sales. Like, have you ever worked with someone before that's like what I do? And they're like, oh yeah, I had a terrible experience with blah, blah, blah. Well, you don't want to fit into blah, 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 because yeah. that's, that's a bad internal representation. And if you model that, then you're going to get the exact same result that they gave that other person. The more questions you ask, the more that you understand them, bottom line. Yep. So task for today is to go out and ask more questions and truly find the need or even and even go and talk to some of your past clients and really ask them what were the really, really powerful things that our service provided for you and solved in your life. What were those biggest strong touch points and yeah. um, I call them PowerPoints of like what was a power solution that you solved that you're like, hey, I do this, this, this and this. That and way you're more clear when you go into the buying process or into the selling process. Who's the next person you know most likely to need that service completed for them or that solution solved? Yep.
So if you're if you're watching the replay, make sure to watch the whole thing. And if you guys love this information, please share it with somebody you know that's struggling with the sales process. Or even this doesn't necessarily need to be for people that are in sales. This is great for just human communication because I know I sell in my ideas all the time. <laughs> that's right. Sometimes she gets really good. <laughs> I have to be careful with what I hear. I have to. I have to think about it logically to make sure that it's ecological for me. <laughs> well, I don't sell with ecology with husbands. <laughs> I'm at least not, ecological. At least not me, I guess. That's fine. Yeah. I'll take it. I love you. I love you. Okay. Bye. See ya. <laughs>